Hello, good morning, uh, good afternoon, uh, good evening. Uh, today I'm having a pleasure of talking to very renowned personality, Dr. Sadi. And I met with Dr. Sadi first time in Paris, if you remember. And uh, that was in 2013. So we were invited by PMI uh, for a special conference for authorized training, and at the time, REP, Registered Education Providers. So that was my first introduction. I mean, I think we know each other before that because you are preparing for BGMP and you're going through a journey and we know each other from some time. And that was a good opportunity to catch up with each other. So you are, you know, very special person and you have been residing in Saudi Arabia, Riyadh, and you have been doing great work, especially in the field of benefit management, benefit. So I'm privileged to have you here today. And it is good to see you again and uh, going to talk about this topic. Welcome. Thank you, Dharam. It's my pleasure uh, to see you, to collaborate with you, uh, to meet again, hopefully in person, when the opportunity presents itself, as, as they say. Well, actually, um, I, I have a passion for everything regarding project management. And project management, when I did my PMP in 2006, OK? That was it, getting a PMP in 2006 and it opened doors and we started to train and do consulting and business and slowly we discovered that organizations need much more than managing a single project. So what would be the next move? The next thing what I did back then, I think it was OPM3 to focus on assessment and consulting and, and we did some very interesting engagements yeah. Then the next step was set was the program management professional. And for me, I got many of these certifications from PMI and from other organizations. But also I got my PhD in project management in 2013 from Schema oh. Business School. But uh, there is a saying about not being a collector, you know the term? The one who just <laughs> yeah. seeks every, everything. And I do certifications all the time then am I a collector or not? So to me, what I did, I said, okay, every time I will seek a certification, there should be a good reason. And the reason should be a commercial reason, reason working with a client on a certain project. Because basically, if yesterday, today, and tomorrow, I'm a practitioner. So we got this project in Africa in the agribusiness. And when I first started to work on the engagement, I discovered this is much more than just a project. Yeah. So I got into the PGMP and I learned many things. And also in the same period, I got the PFMP. I was lucky to be number three in the world to take it, the PFMP, yeah. to hold it. And based on project program portfolio, OPM3, now I had the if you like the overview of organizational project management yeah. and I, I started to look at one thing which is what is in the whole value proposition for the organization because ultimately the organization is the one that pays for the investment and when they want to pay for an investment they want to realize certain strategies on the long term yeah. and maybe on the shorter term some benefits but these benefits should be sustainable because if they are sustainable they turn into value okay and this value produces the uh, gets us nearer to realize the strategies and the kpi should, should show, show that so ultimately c-level people do not think a lot about project management they think about strategy, they think about business sustainability, they think about value. And I found some of these concepts uh, provided in different standards of PMI. And I started to work with them until we got this, this project in Africa in agribusiness. And I worked there for, for a couple of years. And what happened in this project? It's a, it's a program, by the way. It's, a, it's about the sugar cane. I did, uh, uh, I did in 2017 for Dubai International Project Management Forum, 
a, a case study about it. And of course, it was licensed by the owner. And what they did, these people, they go to a piece of land next to the river. And the first thing they do studies. And there are some sort of people or tribes living there. So there are social projects or engagements to relocate them to other places, but they don't agree just like that. We'll tell them in turn of getting out of your land because legally it's not their land, but they've been living there from like hundreds of years before. So you yeah. cannot just move them away. It's their land, <laughs> okay, <laughs> but not their land. So you, move, you want to move them and for them to move away, you tell them, okay, how about I hire your people and I train them and they work with us on this program. Now this is mutual social benefit. They agree. Mm. But if you're talking about several thousand kilo, square kilometers and many tribes, the line of social project becomes a dedicated task for a project manager to, to do all these. And the number one thing he needs to know or she is to be excellent in stakeholder management and in, in, in good, good PR. The, after they get these people, relocate these people, not can I say get them out because they are, will be back in as, as workers or as factory work or workers or as employees, they start the civil work to set the land. And then the other agriculture engineers, they formulate what they call a seed farm, which is a farm that plants seed and they do a lot of tweaking on, 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 on this type of seed to enhance the yield every year to give you more. Mm. And then the farming comes in and they start to farm. They start to farm and then they establish a, a pump station to provide the water to these vast kilometers. Mm. And then when it's time to crop, to do the cropping, they get them in parallel, they are, they are building a sugar cane factory because it's all about sugar cane. Yep. And this sugar cane factory, it takes the molasses out of sugar. And the molasses is a commodity. And from molasses, they make sugar. But some factories buy molasses. Now, because they are going green, they said instead, previously, they used to burn the field so that the fibers do not get into the farm, uh, the, 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 the process plant. And they've de devised something more advanced. They take these fibers and they open another plant and they make from them animal feed. Mm. Now we have animal feed, a huge amount of animal feed. They got a hundred cows. In some years, they became 2000 cows. The amount of milk in the beginning, they can drink and they can make uh, uh, products, dairy, dairy products from them. Maybe Cleopatra can get uh, her, her daily shower of, of milk from that. But when it's 2000, there are not enough Cleopatras around. So what they make? They make a powder milk factory. And a lot of byproducts had not started with the sugar yet. Then they get the molasses and they build a refinery. Now one refinery will uh, serve multiple uh, sugar plants, okay? And the refinery can help you produce brown sugar, normal sugar, extra sugar. Each one has a price. And you start to sell the sugar. Mm. But what about the residuals, the residual fibers after they uh, squeeze the molasses out of them? They take these types of fibers and they make a fermentation plant. And just like Brazil, now they are getting biofuel. They are taking, getting biofuel, mm. which is very expensive. Now they have fuel. Now in this deserted piece of land, they had to build a power station. Now they have the fuel for their, for their power station. But the power station they build is larger than they need, so they start, start to sell electricity to the power grid. 
And what they cannot utilize in terms of biofuel for the plant and for their cars, they start to sell the fuel. Mm. You see? And they are selling types of sugar. At the same time, in order to serve all this, they had to do a lot of construction. They had to do roads. And they had to build uh, uh, houses for people. And when they had enough people, they had to build a school and a hospital. Oh. With time, over 20 years, they had five schools, three hospitals, a small airport, oh. a small city of around 100,000. Oh. And this city produces everything they need and they give to the outside. This is sustainable benefit. It's yeah, not exactly. only sustainable benefit on the, on the level of the products they are producing. Yep. You have a society, exactly. you have jobs, okay? You have development in every aspect, financial, social, okay? They became a hub that produces. Now imagine if we had enough investments to replicate this project you, you mm. can kill poverty in, in all over the world. Exactly. <laughs> this is when I actually understood what the meaning of a program is. Which, pro no, it's because the factory is a project. The piping station, pump station, That's is a, a project. Yep. The power plant is a project, for example. But when you put an aggregate the output of each one of these together, you have outcomes, you have benefits. And then they established, it, it started as a program, a 10 years program. Yeah. And, they, and one of their projects is to establish a company with a corporate head office to manage everything in a sustainable manner. Yeah. So, we, we, so the program manager, when he left, he left behind him a full organization, a full company. Yeah. Now, I was not part, to be honest, of the whole 20 years. I was part only in two years, okay? And we worked in, in this. I learned a lot. I could benefit them perhaps a little bit here, here and there, but I understood in practice what a program is. Yeah. Now, now, this is my experience when I focused on the PMI certifications, which are valid today even more than before, because the standard has been updated in a manner that reflects better uh, practice, best practices, best practices yeah. in a more pragmatic, pragmatic manner. They are not. Uh, concerned a lot about input, output, tool, and technique, as much about the concept, the domain, uh, uh, the, the knowledge, the practice, and, 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 and so on. But in, on the other hand, when I wanted to replicate this to other organizations I work with, because within our advisors ecosystem, we have partners in several countries in the MENA region. We have lots of international providers, lots of partners, networks, and even followers because we do lots of uh, free knowledge sharing, okay? This is the benefit we, we try to give back to our, if you like, uh, practice and industry. So in, in this perspective, I started to look, how can we replicate this, uh, these types of benefits to organizations? Yeah. And this is when I, had an encounter with the APMG, International Managing Benefits Standard. And I started to read about it and I uh, made friendship and then an agreement with the person who authorized it. Uh, and I started to investigate and I found that the Commonwealth countries, like in the Treasury in UK, uh, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, even a project in Abu Dhabi, they all utilize this standard. So what, what does it differ from what we already know? 
Whereas in project management, we speak about portfolio, program, project. They have these three, but they start with strategy and end with operations. Mm. And they call operations business as usual. But the nice thing is that during inception, when we are thinking, when we are into, into the ideation, the very early phases of any investment, okay? they bring up up front the operation people, the business as usual. Why? We've, we've learned and we've been practicing and teaching people that we realize strategy through successful projects. Well, this is right, but it's not the whole story. Mm -hmm. There is an ingredient with, which, which is missing. Yeah. What, what about the operation people? The sea level, in many cases, they don't understand project management. They don't understand the value of the PMO. Some, many, in rare cases, they, they practice portfolio management. Not all of them. Some of them, yes. Some of them, no. But all of them, them they cater for operations. And there is a simple test. I asked the CEO, do you ever think about firing your financial department? He says, no, I cannot live without them. Your services, no. Your production, no. Your IT, no. Your personnel, no. Your PMO, yes. <laughs> okay. There you go. And, okay, and this test shows you either they do not uh, they do not understand the value of project management as a discipline yeah. to realize strategy, and there is something missing from the project management side, people which is, we are there. I'm a project manager in the beginning, at the end. We are there to serve the operations. The one who realizes the strategy yeah. is the operations. So for example, if they are building a new entity, a new instrument, a new building, okay, a new airport, if you ask project management people and technical people and investors, everybody would invest into something concrete from their perspective, okay? Yeah. And they pay a lot of money in the buildings, in the instruments, state of the art, even in technology. And the most important factor, the people, the main drive, in some cases, they are neglected or they are not seen as important as they should yeah. be. Yeah. So you can end up with a huge airport, but you don't have enough talent, enough skills to manage it properly. Yeah. So your project succeeded as a project manager to build this airport, to deliver it on time, budget, quality, etc. Everybody's happy, you make a party, you handle the key and you go home. The very next day, the airport does not work properly. You have yeah. issues in baggage system. You have issues into handling, into collaboration, communication, etc. And you, you find out that you missed the most important factor. So what happens if we start from the inception of the airport by speaking to existing operators yeah. and by helping them benchmark towards where they could be with respect to other operators or other facilities and, and so on, and assess this type of gap of the functions, of the skills, and also the utilities and, and equipment and material they need, and start at the strategic side, planning together, then these operators, let us assume, they would assign a role called benefit owner mm. and this yep. benefit owner he's not a project manager he is not a program manager and he is not a portfolio manager now this benefit owner knows exactly this gap from where we are where we want to to reach okay and how to attain these sustainable benefits yeah. So when you start to assign your project and program managers 
this is a major stakeholder because now we do not tell them, listen, you are required to deliver this static deliverable. What we need from you is performance measured. Okay, it's not something just Yana, you measure the building or the instrument. It's not enough. It's always part and we were gonna do it all the time. But right now, can you deliver me a team that is capable of running this state of the art facility? And when he asks me, I tell him, I need to do my homework mm. and we need four years to build this type of, of airport or five years. But the talent you are talking about, they also need four or five years if we start today. Not, yeah. not one day before cutting the ribbon. <laughs> okay? Exactly. So, so, so the whole idea, working on the people, it's not just only that. Okay? Nice. When you're talking about managing benefits, it's, it's about ultimately better return on investment. It's about doing more for less. Yeah. It's about realizing the value which gets you more trust by stakeholders. Definitely. And you know, the secret to succeed, whether you are a project program portfolio, officer, director, or manager, or whatever, if you have the commodity of trust, all the doors will be open for you. Correct. So, so I moved into this realm and I got to become maybe in the region, the first accredited, uh, not only foundation and practitioner, but also trainer for managing benefits. Even we are localizing it now in, in Arabic yeah. and, and other things. And I made alliance also with, with APMG International just to focus on this type of delivery. Because again, to me, knowledge is my passion. Learning is my passion, but I don't believe in just learning from the book. Mm. I don't believe just learning by getting a certification. These two have been and will still be part of every learning journey I take. But I try to bundle them with an actual engagement or uh, participation uh, uh, activity so that uh, whatever I'm, I'm talking about, I can actually, uh, okay, I can actually, whatever I'm talking about, I can actually practice as they say what I preach. Great. Okay. And, and whenever you practice, even when you go back, because you are an educator, Baram, and I'm also an educator. Yeah. And it gives me great pleasure to share knowledge. But the beautiful thing about it is not just to read a slide or tell them, listen, you should do one, two, three, four. The best thing in, in teaching is to tell them a story. Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. And that's so, when people get connected, you know, when they hear the story, a real story, and uh, you have, they can connect themselves with the story. Oh, yeah. That's where the learning is happening. As you correctly said, it's not just reading the slide and, you know, gets hours and hours of talking, talking, talking. But once you, once you get audience attention, and that you get by having, you know, by having a right story for them. Exactly. Exa exactly. Ex exactly. And it turns the training session from a training session or a workshop into a consultative engagement because yeah. especially uh, it's harder when it's a public course because if mm. everybody asks about his own exactly. company or organization it you'll not have enough time to cater for for everything yeah. this is why my preference lately was not for public was for uh, corporate in 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 house then they start to open up and what starts as we are discussing a concept and we show them a template and we tell them a story and we show them how they used it. And even sometimes I get them to do this simple exercise. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do your work on the template. Now they learn something. Try to implement it and do it again. 
and they see the big difference. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then they, what they, it turns out to manage their own work. Okay. And it becomes a consulting session. And I love these. Yeah. Okay. Because the time is over and nobody knows. <laughs> okay. <laughs> time pa 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 uh, passes by. So yes, I believe managing benefits, although, although the term used by, by the British, managing benefits, if you Google it, what do you get? You get a uh, personnel benefit, conference about HR and, 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 and so on. Uh, the term benefit is not very well known for its proper definition or proper use. Mm. To me, I'm not so talking about, because I can get you, PMI defines it like this, and APMG defines it like this, and so on. To me, simply... I, I think, uh, let's, let's give this differentiation of AP, PMI and uh, APMG for the next talk. Uh, and we have established such a beautiful path and with the example of the agri of the sugar, fact, sugar factory. That's really beautiful. So we, we, I think let's get together again for the next topic, next week or something uh, to talk about these differences coming from PMI point of view, APMG point of view, and maybe other views. But I, I like to conclude this by, first of all, the way you put the story together in such a, you know, in a, such an engaging way. I, I got, you know, I got, got to learn a lot from this, this whole, whole story. And, uh, you know, the, how you, you know, start the, you know, somebody started this whole village and then the village became city and, you know, that's sustainable, sustainable ben, uh, country, city itself and the whole, you know, country itself become sustainable. And, and, and you see the value coming from everywhere. And so that's, you made the, this uh, uh, complex topic very interesting and very easy to learn. And I think when people watching this particular discussion, they probably got a lot out of this and they can actually relate whatever they're doing. Is it really making, giving the benefit to the organization? What else can I do to you know, sustain that? Yes, of course, they can read the PMI's standard, APMG standard, and many of the standards available. But you know, this, discuss, this kind of discussion definitely add more value to them. And, uh, and I'm really happy that you took my, you accepted my invite and uh, came to this forum. And uh, I'm sure we'll have more discussion around benefit, value, and many other things. Thank you very much, Dharam. It's been my pleasure. And I see you just uh, implemented the Shahrazad. Uh, you know, Thousand Nights, the story mm -hmm. of Thousand Nights, okay? In the yeah. story of Thousand Nights, there is a Sultan. And this Sultan uh, marries a woman in the, in the evening and kills her in the morning. Oh. Until, yeah, yeah, uh, until they got him a very smart woman called Shahrazad. And Shahrazad, what she did, he, he married her and she told him, Would you like to hear a story? Mm. And he said, Yes, very much. <laughs> so she, so she, she uh, uh, said, talked about something, a story, and they reached a certain peak and she said, We will continue tomorrow. Exactly. He said, what? No way, tomorrow. So the second day, he said, don't kill her. I need to see, to hear <laughs> the remaining of the story. And she did that for a thousand nights until he decided not to kill women anymore. <laughs> okay. Exactly. So that's where so to, <laughs> <laughs> to talk so, about how to implement it for organization is, it, is, it, is a different story. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to give... All, all of it today only because I want people to get some flavor, which you, I think people got it. And next time they're waiting for, for, for when you're going to come and talk again about more of the benefits, more stories. So, yes, I will be more formal. You quote me in my mountain log. And, uh... <laughs> no, you, that's where I think that's where the beauty is. You know, you, know, you don't have to wrap sun in a, in a beautiful coat. You know, the sun is sun. You know, you just. And, you know, that's where it is. So uh, once again, thank you very much. It's a pleasure talking to you. And uh, we will be in touch again to set up new time to bring you again on more discussions. So, but thank you. And, uh, and people like to find more about Mr. Uh, Dr. Sadi. Yes, he's available on the internet and uh, he can help you with many other things. And if they, you like to 
learn something from me, definitely reach out to me. My name is Dharam Singh, and thank you and pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Bye-bye.